I've been stacking precious metals for the last 18 years. And in that time, I've seen a thing or two when it comes to the gold and silver price. Not just the price, but demand or the lack thereof at times and how it can affect premiums on these metals. This video will show you how to get the best deal when buying gold and silver, as well as establish a baseline with tools for you to reference for years to come. Hey everyone, welcome to Campbell's Coins. This is going to be a long, informative video, so grab your favorite beverage, sit back, and relax. Online bullion dealers try to rope you in with supposed deals, like 20% off the premium, $100 over spot. But what does all of this mean? With all the marketing gimmicks and differing pricing for gold and silver out there, how do you know if you're getting the best deal for your gold and silver purchase? There are a lot of different prices, not to mention a huge variety of items, and you don't want to get ripped off. I get a fair number of new stackers joining this channel every week. Welcome to you all. Congrats on starting your stacking journey. With these new stackers come a lot of questions. Some of your typical questions like, what's the best gold to buy? Others are questions to aspects I thought I had already covered in previous videos. But looking back, I didn't cover it as extensively. One question I received recently was, how do I know if I'm getting the best deal? They didn't specify in terms of buying or selling, but folks typically want to know about the best deal when buying. The short and quick answer to this question is research. What do you research and where do you start? I understand this topic is extremely daunting, especially when considering the cost. You first need to find out spot price for the metal that you're buying. I use the Kitco app, or you can use their website. This app shows off the spot price for gold, silver, platinum, palladium, industrial metals, oil, as well as the stock market values, and cryptos. It's a very useful tool. All online bullion dealers websites will have the spot price listed at the top of their page as a ticker. But there's one major problem here. None of these prices match the Kitco app. Why is this the case? Well, each of the dealers out there take the Kitco spot price for each metal and add a special markup to it. This is not the premium that you often hear about on different coins and bars. This is in addition to the premium of each of the items they sell. This special markup is an extra tax towards you, and it's very important because it ranges between each dealer, and dealers base their pricing off of their spot plus their markup instead of at Kiko's spot price. Essentially, you're paying more just to shop at a specific online dealer, and you're getting the same piece as everyone else. Now we've arrived at where to buy. I've covered both where to buy as well as the extra tax from dealers and a couple of other videos, but it's a very important topic to cover again. Before I get started, this extra markup isn't necessary, but it's something these dealers get away with. I've taken screenshots of the four major online bullion dealers I've done business with. These are all taken within a minute of each other. You'll notice vastly different numbers with Atmex, J and Bullion at the top, on the higher end, followed by SD Bullion and Monument Metals at the bottom. By the way, I am not sponsored by any of these dealers nor any others. I have them listed from most expensive to least. And before anyone chimes in about what about so-and-so dealer, I can only talk about what I've experienced and used. I haven't purchased from other dealers not listed here, so I can't really recommend them one way or another for my audience. So Kitco lists spot price for gold at $19.50, silver at $24.19, and platinum $944. I took these screenshots a week ago, and prices have changed if you check today, but you get the idea. As I mentioned previously, all screenshots were taken within two minutes of one another while the market was closed. So the price jumps that you see 
isn't due to a different snapshot at a different time on a different day. Prices are from August 27th, 2023. And the video that you're watching now was released on September 4th, 2023. You can see how each dealer has their own spot price for these metals above Kitco's pricing. When an online dealer says an ounce of gold is $100 over spot, it's not $100 over Kitco's price. It's $100 over that specific dealer's price. You can pause here and see how much each dealer charges over spot. And this does not include the premiums on the coins and bars. In addition to the highest markups, these dealers at the top of this photo will also have the highest premiums compared to the two at the bottom, and especially when compared to your LCS or local coin shop. Buy from a dealer who has the lowest markup. I have found Monument Metals to have consistently low pricing and low markups. Here are two more screenshots to illustrate my point. Again, these were taken within seconds of one another. Both of these are 2023 one ounce gold buffaloes, but Atmex is charging $70 over Monument Metals price. While I'm referring to gold, this is the case for silver and platinum too. Not only does Atmex list a higher spot price over everyone else, they are charging a higher premium on that same item too. You can check these pages to see for yourself. I prefer to buy from my LCS. Your coin shop will more than likely have lower pricing over these online dealers. Even if my dealer has the same pricing as Monument or is slightly over, I still purchase from them to support local business. This markup is more than likely due to the number of sponsors these dealers have, whether here on YouTube, Instagram, or some other personality. So the next time you hear, oh, I got this for spot, and eh, wrong, you got that for spot plus the dealer's markup. You aren't buying at Kiko's spot price. Now, maybe you were drawn into buying precious metals from the YouTube talking heads on the doom and gloom pages speaking with authority about the economy crashing imminently and gold moonshotting to $50,000 an ounce. On a side note, you want to talk about not being ripped off, a good start is to be very careful who you choose to listen to. A lot of YouTube channels have fooled people into thinking they know what they're talking about or they've convinced their audience that their opinion is fact. Get a prediction or a call wrong? No problem. They just keep pumping the doom and gloom. Throw a thousand darts at the wall. Eventually one will stick and they can just claim that they were right all along. Having the education and or experience to speak on precious metals or the economy is very important. Avoid the hyperbolic channels who are selling fear instead of having their audience's best interest at heart. But I digress. I mentioned this gold moonshot only because if you are of that mindset and you believe that gold is going to $50,000 an ounce, who cares if you bought a gold eagle at $2,000 versus $2,050? When you go to sell or trade that gold eagle in this imaginary scenario, are you going to say, you'll never guess what I got this for. I got it for $2,000. Meanwhile, my buddy paid $2,050. What an idiot. He paid $50 more. If a moonshot occurs, will that $50 mean anything? It doesn't to me. I think people get too wrapped up in spot price. And instead of looking at what gold offers you, they have this dollar-centric mindset and focus too much on the price they paid rather than focusing on how many ounces they own. I've always said, spot price doesn't matter, and I still maintain the stance. Getting the best deal is nice, but the prices on these metals fluctuates daily. What may be a good deal today will suck tomorrow, and vice versa. It might appear like the deal of the century in less than a month. For more details on this stance, check out this video. Lots of things come into play when pricing gold and silver. It's not super straightforward as X amount over spot price. I wish it were that easy. Items might look the same, but one has a lower mintage or a mint mark on it that values it above the rest. Take these two gold American Eagles. Both are one ounce. 
Both are made with the same purity of gold. Both are the same year. But one has a lower mintage and is worth more over the other. This is due to the W mint mark designating it was minted at West Point. I bought this one because my dealer was selling for $20 more than the bullion version. I'll pay a little bit more for a unique piece. If this was priced at $400 over spot, I wouldn't buy it. As long as you familiarize yourself with the options out there, you should be fine when making purchases. I think the best way to figure out if you're getting ripped off is to look at historical context. Your basic gold bullion will be priced anywhere from $50 to $100 over spot for a one ounce piece. During periods of high demand, these numbers will go up. I've seen premiums in high demand periods go for $100 to $300 over spots. We recently saw $200 premiums on gold. Thankfully, those are dropping right now. During periods of low demand, they drop. In 2005, when I was buying Gold Eagles, I think the premium was $25 to $50. It wasn't much. Premiums change, but if you can get an idea of the average, that should help you making decisions today. I think the premiums I saw in 2005 are long gone, and we could expect to see $50 to $100 premiums, if not more, going forward. Dealers have taken notice with the doom and gloom channels. They know gold will sell for $200 over spot if some non-educated YouTuber tells their audience the end is near and they need to buy now. Or my favorite, the silver supply shortage is coming. In 2008, we saw real demand because gold and silver supplies dried up to the point where shelves were empty for six months. We haven't seen supplies drop that low since then. But we have seen dealers inflate their prices as if we were back in 2008 with diminishing supplies. We've had some shortages in 2020 due to workers not being able to work. But YouTubers do their part to reinforce this fear. And that's because fear sells. This is why you'll find a lot of veteran stackers, especially here on YouTube, pause in their gold buying when premiums inflate. They know it's temporary and things will eventually level out. When it comes to buying gold, gold bars will typically have the lowest premiums. Gold coins will have a higher premium in the same time frame. I have videos out discussing the pros and cons of bars versus coins. As a new stacker, you might think, all gold is gold. Why the price discrepancy? Well, it's because all gold is not gold. Sure, it might be one ounce. It might be the same purity, but it's backed by a specific country the demand for it, and the tax benefits it can offer typically add to the price. Another point here is in regards to demand. Just because you got a piece of gold for spot price or barely over spot price, or maybe you got lucky and you got it for under spot, it does not mean that that is something you're able to sell in the future. You want to purchase items other individuals will be interested in. Gold shot, for instance, is pretty cheap. It's four nines fine pure, but when the time comes to sell or trade, will you be able to do so? There isn't any markings on the shop proving it's gold. For all the buyer knows, you gold coated lead shot. Unless you have a metal analyzer, it could prove difficult to test authenticity. A recognizable piece of bullion, which can be easily tested for authenticity, is ideal for purchasing. If you're buying fractional gold, expect to pay a lot more over the one ounce pieces. This is due to demand. A lot more buyers can afford a 10th ounce and a quarter ounce gold coin versus the one ounce pieces. More buyers equal more demand. I've done videos on the fractional gold premiums as has Silver Heist. I like to call him Professor Heist because he likes to bring in his blackboard to show you how much more you're paying buying fractional gold versus one ounce sizes among a host of other things. For my fractional gold bar fans out there, my apologies. This is one area I haven't kept track of premiums over the years because I just don't buy fractional gold bars often, if at all. Bars will have a lower premium over coins, but there will still be a premium. For silver bullion, the average premium for one ounce size is $1 to $5 over spot. For the last three years, these premiums have ballooned to $5 to $20 over spot depending upon the piece. 
But today, premiums are coming down drastically. When I was buying silver, my average premium was 50 cents over spot. No one really cared about silver, so premiums were really low. I wouldn't hold out for 50 cent premium silver. I think any one ounce sovereign silver coin with premiums under $5 is a decent buy. Any silver bars with premiums under $3 is decent too. Don't buy fractional silver. I repeat, avoid fractional silver unless it's a collector piece. The same principles I outlined for gold apply to silver too. I've heard about coin shops trying to sell high premium gold, like pre-33 gold and or collectible silver coins to unsuspecting new buyers. I'm sure there are a few predatory shops out there doing this, but in my experience, this is not the norm. As long as you go into the shop with some knowledge about what you're looking for, you'll do fine. And if you don't like the shop and you don't like how they're treating you, take your cash elsewhere. You don't need to buy there. Find the shop that you like. If you're buying from a local coin shop, one way to find out if you're getting ripped off is to offer to sell what you bought back to the shop. They will offer you less than what you paid. This is a given because the shop needs to make money when they buy and or sell. However, if a shop refuses to buy back from you, this is a huge red flag. It means the shop doesn't want you to find out how much of a spread they put on that item because if you do, you might see you were ripped off. Unfortunately, I have heard a lot of negative talk regarding coin shops. Many folks feel that they are being ripped off. Many within the precious metals community erroneously complain about the prices they paid for precious metals. But this mindset is all wrong. I think the precious metals market is one of, if not the most transparent market out there. We as consumers know and have up-to-date spot price for gold and silver at our fingertips. We can see the price of the coin and or bar, and from those two numbers, we can determine the premium. How many products that you purchase on a regular basis or just once in a decade? Do you know the cost for the materials and the time to put it together? I would argue virtually none. You don't know the materials it costs a company to assemble a computer, but you'll pay whatever price they attach to it. Even That's without knowing this base. TVs, cell phones, cars, they could have a 200% premium and you're happily paying for it. But once you know the premium on a precious metal item, suddenly there's outrage when it goes from 12 to 15%. There are a lot of ignorant channels who pass this indignant rage onto the audience, making people think this outrage is legitimate and precious metal should be only purchased for spot. But the problem is that they haven't been stacking long enough to lend accurate perspectives. For specialty items or collector's pieces, there can be no ceiling to the premium. I have newly minted silver pieces I bought for $150 per ounce. I have old silver coins, 100 times over their silver value. I typically stay away from modern collectible gold, but I'm very partial to pre-33 gold. If you absolutely must buy collectible coins, good resources to use are PCGS and eBay. PCGS is a grading agency and they have every American coin listed. You're able to look up details for each coin, the years, the mints. They list a price value for each coin grade, but this is often higher than market value. They also list past auction prices for coins sold in a particular grade. And you can use these prices as parameters, but I would argue they are on the higher end of the value scale. Dealers use a pricing guide called Gray Sheet. These values are lower than what's listed on PCGS. And you do have to have a membership to gain access to their values. eBay, is okay as you can look at what certain pieces are selling for or what they have it listed at. eBay can have very inflated or deflated values, so it's not the most accurate, but it gives you something to start with. As a newbie, you should stay away from any collectible pieces until you've educated yourself better because that is honestly a whole other can of worms. We can only tell you so much because there is so much nuance out there. It would be impossible to cover every single aspect for all these types of bullion and collectible items in a single concise video. 
which is why I have so many videos breaking down all these types of aspects. So how do you find out if you're getting ripped off? This video circles back to do your research, find out what spot price is. Are you in a high or low demand period? Based on what I've mentioned for average premiums in these time periods, doesn't match what the dealer or individual is charging you. Where are you buying from? Monument Metals is a great online source as of 2023, but your LCS is better. Buy from a reputable shop who tests their metals thoroughly and will buy back from you. Shop around. Nearly everyone has the internet at their fingertips, and you can check the prices of all these online dealers' pages to get an idea what certain pieces are selling for on each page. Avoid the collectible coin market until you're more experienced. I think this is a very broad base for people to start off of to find out if they're actually getting ripped off. Let us know what your thoughts are. Your time is your most precious asset, and I appreciate you spending it here with me. Thank you all for watching. This is Campbell's Coins, and that is my two cents.